Hello and Merry Christmas Eve. So, I got this today. It is a Google Nest Mini, which is what they're calling their Google Home Minis now, I guess. I don't usually follow this stuff. I really don't get this stuff, the whole smart speaker thing. Um, I have a phone if I need to look up something or play some music. I don't need a device. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but I got this for free. And originally, when it was offered to me for free, I, I you know, I'm not going to pass it up. It's free. I was going to give it to a friend. And then I found out it has Bluetooth capability. I was like, oh, well, if I could just use it as a Bluetooth speaker, yeah, I'll take it. You know, regular price is $50 for these. But every time I've looked it up online, they're actually $35 on sale. But $35 that I don't have to spend. And um, again, I've only had it for a little bit. And I haven't turned up the volume all the way because my son is sick and he's sleeping. But uh, it seems like it has pretty good sound. So for a Bluetooth speaker, hey, pretty nice. Now, it does have a little switch on here to turn off the microphone. Whether that's a physical disconnect or not, I don't know. Um, but again, I was hoping to just use it as Bluetooth and not even hook it to my Wi-Fi. When I originally turned it on, it showed up on my phone. I saw it as a Bluetooth device for a moment, and then it disappeared, and I couldn't get it come back. So what I ended up doing was taking one of my, my spare phones, because I got, I got other phones lying around that I use for testing stuff. You know, I try to keep proprietary software to a minimum, but if I need to test something, uh, I have these uh, old Android devices that I can put stuff on, and then I can just wipe the device. So I threw Google Home app on there just to get this thing connected. I connected it to my Wi-Fi, and then I asked it, can you please turn on the Bluetooth? And I got it set up, so now I can use it as a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, currently, I have it connected to my Wi-Fi, uh, but I'm going to boot it off after I do some testing. I ran some port scans, um, so... <laughs> Uh, I'll show you right here. I just did a. Can you can you see that? It's hard. I gotta hold the camera backwards. So, anyway, it's it's uh, ports eight thousand eight, eight thousand nine, eight four four three, nine thousand, and ten thousand and one are open TCP ports. Of course, you know I I haven't dug deeper than that. I tried opening up each one in a web browser, even though I knew Google wasn't gonna have anything there, and they didn't show anything. But those ports are open. Uh, the other thing is. This little screw hole where you hang it up had a little white piece of plastic in there that I popped out with a screwdriver. There's uh, one screw in there. I'd like to take this thing apart, but I don't think you really can without tearing it apart. At least not me. I'm not very gentle. But if you look, now that I've removed that plastic thing, let me shine it towards the light. See there. Oh, there you go. You can get it real good right there. There's some little uh, pads there. And I bet those are used to program it. I doubt it'd be something as, serial as, uh, as simple as hooking up a serial connector to it and, and you get a root shell, but that would be awesome. Um, probably won't play with this too much more. Again, I'm just going to use it as a Bluetooth speaker. I would love to see something get a hack because I, I would like to um, be able to stream stuff over Wi-Fi to it if possible, but I don't want to have all that Google stuff. Again, I don't even know if I want it on my network with the whole... Even though this has a switch to turn off the microphone, does it really physically turn off the microphone, or is it done in software through that switch? I don't know. I wouldn't know without opening it. It's hard to find information on these devices because they're pretty new. You can look up stuff on the older version, the, the Home Mini, but this is the new Nest Mini. Uh, it's relatively new, so there's not a lot of information out there on there. So I thought I'd do this video to share some information with you guys. So again, I guess older models powered through USB, and some people... Didn't get very far from what I've looked, but you would be able to put it into a certain boot mode and it will at least show up as a device. Uh, but these ones don't even have that. It's it's just a regular round power. Because I guess these are louder, so they need more power than um, standard USB could put out. So, I mean, the only way of hopes of getting to this thing would be, again, uh, connecting to it directly. Again, if we can get the lighting just right. Right there. I, I Those look so much like connector pads. Uh, so if you, if you, uh, are, are good with that sort of thing, maybe you want to buy these and see what those do, you know, cheap devices. I like cheap devices because usually those you can get serial connections on, but Google's, Google doesn't want you doing that. They're too smart to do that. They're not just going to let you hook up through serial and reprogram it. It would be, if they did, I would buy these. If I could get, if this thing was running Linux and I can get a root shell on it with just anything I can get Linux with a root shell on, um, I can program it to do even the simplest things. Um, I would buy these. I, I, you know, for 35 bucks, if I needed a, a speaker, a wireless speaker, this would be a good deal for me. But since I can't, I'm not going to buy any more of these because it's, 
I don't want to use your Google Home app. I don't want to use your YouTube apps. And I mean, just going through on that test device to get this hooked up, it's like, do you want to hook up Sling? Do you want to hook up Netflix? Do you want to hook up YouTube? No, no, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to get Bluetooth running on this. And I had to connect it to my Wi-Fi to get it to do that. Now, maybe you don't have to. Again, I saw the Bluetooth device when I first turned it on, but then it disappeared. But again, it's hooked to my Wi-Fi now. Um, and uh, to hook a new device to Bluetooth, I have to turn on the speaker and say, pair a new Bluetooth or something like that. And then it will allow me to pair something new. I don't know if it's going to require me to be hooked to a network to do that. I'm guessing maybe. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to go into my router settings and block this device. That way I can easily uh, go back into my router and re-enable it if I need to hook up a new Bluetooth device. It just seems like a very roundabout way. But again, it's all about control. That's why they want you to install their, their, their devices. They want you to install their apps on your phone so they control all. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid that, you know. I don't mind buying the hardware. I just wish the software was more usable without the whole, you know, I'm not even that concerned about the spying. I just want control over my own device. You want it, You want me to talk to it and it sends my voice up to your cloud and you hear what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I'm not saying I want that, but I wouldn't care too much if I had control over the device myself. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to have good sound. And again, once I bump it off the network and turn off the speaker, I'm pretty... Uh, I'm not worried about security in that aspect, uh, and just having it as a Bluetooth device will be useful. But I really, really would love to see somebody hack this and get some sort of, um, it, you know, open source software they can connect to it, or even just, just if I could physically plug something in here and reprogram it to open up a port that I could stream stuff to it from my desktop, or even stream stuff from YouTube, but without using the YouTube app. I do that on my desktop all the time with. YouTube DL and MPV, you know, I do stuff, I do that to my, my uh, TV in the living room, I've got a Raspberry Pi running uh, Kodi, or yeah, it's called Kodi now, uh, and and I have it set up so I can just send an H, uh, HTTP request and give it a URL to a YouTube video and it will play it, and I do that all, you know, from my desktop or whatever device, I don't need to install anything specific, so anyway. Just thought I'd talk about it for a minute. You know, again, there's open ports, but I, I'm betting that if I, even if I network scan them, I bet they're all encrypted. You know, I, I'm sure that when I first hooked it up, the uh, Google Home app probably swapped keys with it or something, or probably doesn't even connect directly to it. It probably goes through the cloud for everything. I don't know. I guess it might, in case you don't have a network, it might connect to it directly after it pairs through the internet. But um, yeah. Google, Google Nest Mini, which is confusing because the Nest, I, I, yeah, Home Mini made more sense to me. But again, these devices don't make sense to me in general. Again, I get a wireless speaker, but I don't need to talk to it. I don't need to ask it stuff. That's what my phone is for. And I always have my phone with me, but eh. And one interesting thing, I do know somebody who has a few of the older models, and they said that they can be used as intercom systems in your house, which would be nice. It'd be cool to be able to do that, but again... I'm not going to install an app to do that. Uh, it'd be nice to just be able to have them connect directly to each other and do that, you know? Anyway, it is Christmas Eve. Again, my son's not feeling well. He's throwing up this morning, but I think he's doing a little bit better. He's napping now. So hopefully he feels better tomorrow, and hopefully the rest of us don't start throwing up tonight. And, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. And um, I already have, like, at least three more videos scheduled between now and the end of the year. And I also have videos... Coming up in January uh, on Android bootloader and partitioning and formatting coming up in January. And, um, and while we're on devices made by big companies, again, uh, I briefly talked not too long ago about uh, Amazon Fire. Again, there's a device that you can get for a good price because they're expecting you to use all their services. And the tablet is a cheap tablet. But you can get them for 30 bucks if you look at the right times. And they're really, they're not great tablets, but they're really good for 30 bucks. And it's very easy to get root on them and clear out the device. And I have a video at the end of January coming up on that. Um, I've already did a video on rooting it and talking about disabling stuff, but I've actually um, made a list of commands to clear out all the Amazon, all the, and you end up removing, there's originally, I think it was like 160 applications installed on there. And by the time we're done, after five, ten minutes or so, we've removed over a hundred of them. That I think there's only like sixty left. And then, um, 
it makes it a pretty decent device. In fact, I got another one for my son that he's getting tomorrow for Christmas, so they both have one. And the most intense thing they do on those is going to be playing Mind Test, and it runs fine on there. Uh, it, when I did a video on that previously, someone that comes around, oh, you don't get yourself a real tablet. Well, again, it's for my, the, the, the one I got for tomorrow is for my four-year-old son. He doesn't need something more than a 30, if I'm spending more than 30 bucks, I'm not buying him a tablet. And it's more powerful once you clear out the software. Hardware is a good thing, but um, if you have the right software, even slow hardware runs great. So, on that. Anyway, I've been talking long enough. Again, I'm not recommending getting one of these, but I just thought I'd point out some of the things, because there's not a lot of information out there by right now. But I think the most interesting thing is going to be these pads on here. Somebody somewhere is going to figure out that. Or one of those open ports I talked about. Fingers crossed. It'd be nice to get a root shell on there <laughs> and be able to set up a small little web server that I can just do HTTP request to tell it to play something, and then I can pass it URLs or something to an audio file and have it play. That would be so cool. I doubt it's going to happen. And you know what? I could probably build something like this pretty cheap, but not for free, which is what I got this for. Anyway, Merry Christmas. Have a great day.